This is Don Stanley. Be with us Thursday for the conclusion of Backstairs at the White House, starring Leslie Uggams and Olivia Cole. Aggressive, immediate, investigative, John Chancellor, NBC Nightly News. And people have used every means imaginable to find it. At Studebaker Well Drilling in Ashland, we use scientific methods to locate dependable water supplies for our customers. We've been doing it since 1896. And Studebaker Well Drilling is the only company in Southern Oregon that will guarantee water. If we don't find it, you don't pay for it. Studebaker Well Drilling, members of the National Water Well Association. Look on the yellow pages under Well Drilling. Fragrance is everywhere on KTMT. This is KTVL, Medford, Oregon. This is New Center 10, prepared each day by Southern Oregon and Northern California's largest television news staff and reported tonight by Terry Miller with Leon Hunsaker and the weather and political commentary by Russell Sadler. Here now is Terry Miller. Good evening and in the news tonight, a Napa, Idaho realtor has been named general manager of the Rogue Valley Transportation District. District directors tonight selected Bill Veers. That selection came on a 5-2 vote, but as a show of unity, the vote was later made unanimous. Veers is a former public relations officer for Georgia Pacific Corporation. This is his first position in a transit district. He replaces Rick Hand. Klamath Falls City school teachers today ratified a three-year contract with the district. That contract will see pay increases of some 19 percent and provisions for inflationary conditions. Today's vote was a far cry from months past where teachers reacted bitterly to negotiations with the district. Throughout the negotiations, there were constant hints the teachers were prepared to strike if necessary. But teacher spokesman Jim Chambers says the agreement is a fair deal and says he expects teachers to pass it early, easily. Okay. I think the essential point, and it was from the very beginning, is to, to re-establish Klamath Falls teachers as, in a comparable pay range with other Southern Oregon school districts. That's been our objective from the beginning. We've argued over how much money, how quickly can we do that, uh, uh, what percentages and all of that. But the essential point, and the, really where we were basing our, our argument, was we want comparability. We are convinced that the three-year package that uh, we have accepted will, in fact, cause us, we think, to be comparable in the second year. And uh, we'll catch up a lot for this coming school year. We'll catch up the remainder, we believe, for the 81-82 school year. In Washington today, the House Interior Committee began work on legislation designed to deal with expected power shortages in the Pacific Northwest. But opponents of the Northwest Regional Power Bill, headed by Oregon Congressman Jim Weaver, tied up the committee with time-consuming quorum calls and full readings of the bill and its proposed amendments. The bill would create a centralized electric utility system tied to the Bonneville Power Administration. It's opposed by some who say it's an unnecessary intrusion by the federal government. Weaver says he's employing the tactics because he wants closer examination of some of the bill's provisions. The Siskiyou County Board of Supervisors today shot down the controversial church complex project in the Schulmeyer Gulch area south of Wairika. The project was proposed by the Northern California Conference Association of Seven-Day Adventists. The complex would have included a 13,000 square foot school and conference center, a swimming pool and a sanctuary, all to be located on 20 acres of land in the Schulmeyer Gulch. Some Gulch area residents opposed the project, saying the church complex would have an adverse effect on the area. But the Siskiyou County Planning Commission last month approved the project, and that action led church complex opponents to an appeal of the commission's decision on the grounds that the Planning Commission ignored the public input process. Although the county planning department has said all environmental concerns with the church project could be mitigated through a variety of measures, the Board of Supervisors today questioned the ability of the access road to support the increased traffic resulting from the complex. Supervisor Mickey McCartle expressed concern that the issuance of a use permit to the church would deny other property owners along that road the ability to split their lots without going through an extensive and expensive environmental impact report. 
On that basis, McArdle introduced a motion to support the appeal and reverse the Planning Commission's approval of the project. The supervisors went along with the motion on a four to one vote with Supervisor Ray Torrey dissenting. A state senator says a proposed state power authority plan is a facade to bring political pressure on publicly owned utilities. That statement today by Democratic Senator Ed Fadley of Eugene came at a hearing before State Public Utility Commissioner John Lobdell's staff on whether Lobdell should approve establishment of a domestic and rural power authority. The 1977 legislature authorized creation of that authority with the idea that as a public agency, it would qualify for the lowest cost electricity sold by the federal Bonneville Power Administration. The lowest rates now are available only to publicly owned utilities. Most Oregonians get their power from private utilities which pay higher rates for federal power. Libertarian candidate Christopher Dyer and Dan Richter lost yesterday in their court challenge to the Secretary of State's decision to keep them off the November ballot. Elections Director Ray Phelps had ruled the candidates were not qualified for the ballot because they had failed to petition separately for the positions of state representative in districts 50 and 51. Dyer said today, He's disappointed. Mr. Dyer, what is your reaction to yesterday's decision? We were very disappointed, Ann, that the judge in Jackson County didn't follow the precedent we discovered in Multnomah County case in 1978. We felt that we were doubly qualified to be on the ballot.